In this video, we will look at the different types of design of jet propulsion. From fighter jet, to helicopters, there are different types of jet propulsion. So, how many types of jet propulsion are there, and what, are, they? In another video, we described the basics of how a jet engine worked. We won't go into too much detail again here, but it is worth reminding you of some of the aspects, as it will be relevant later in this video. The essence of all designs is that hot air from the combustion chamber will flow over the turbines and cause them to rotate. As the turbines are connected to the drive shaft, this causes the drive shaft to rotate. The drive shaft not only turns the compresses, but will also power other aspects of the engine, which we will discuss later. So, how many basic types of jet engines do we have? There are basically four types the turbojet, the turbofan, the turboprop, and the turboshaft. Firstly, we will look at the turbojet. The turbojet was the first design of engine, and is usually incorporated into military fighter jets. The turbojet's thrust is derived purely from the hot exhaust gas, which is directed out of the rear exhaust nozzle. The advantage is that the design of the engine is slimmed down, which is perfect for fitting into fighter jets. Another advantage is that all of the hot exhaust gas, which makes up all of the thrust, can be directed into the reheat system, or afterburners, as the Americans call it. The turbojet has disadvantages, in that it can be very noisy, and is not as fuel efficient as the turbofan. Not what you'd want in a modern airliner. The next section to discuss, is the turbofan. The turbofan is fitted to modern airliners, and continuing design improvements are massively increasing fuel efficiency, and reducing noise levels. The design of the turbofan is similar to any other jet engine, in that it has turbines, combustion chambers, a drive shaft, and compresses. The difference being, the turbofan engine has a series of large fan blades at the front of the engine, which makes up the fan. The fan acts as a very powerful propeller, and 90% of the engine's thrust is produced by the fan. The rest of the engine is known as the core. The airflow from the fan travels around the outside of the core, and out through its own exhaust at the back. The hot air from the core produces about 10% of the thrust. Later designs, such as the Airbus Neo, have a smaller core design, which enables the fan area to be increased. This has led to greater efficiency of the engine. Modern airliners have reverse thrust fitted. The reverse thrust mechanism diverts the airflow from the fan, to the outside of the engine, and points the airflow forwards. Whilst the core is still producing forward thrust, the net gain of diverting the fan's airflow, is to give a 25 to 30% braking thrust. The next section to discuss, is the turboprop. Turboprop aircraft are still in use today, and are very good at the shorter routes. Whilst turbojet and turbofan aircraft are more efficient at higher levels, turboprops are efficient at low to medium levels. The turboprop structure is very similar to the turbojet and turbofan engines. It still has the turbines, the combustion chambers, compresses, and drive shaft. There are actually two drive shafts, one inside the other. One drive shaft is connected to the inner turbines, and drives the compresses. The other drive shaft is driven by the outer turbines, and connects to a gearbox. The gearbox in turn is connected to a propeller. The gearbox's job is to reduce the core's RPM to a suitable level for the propeller to operate. The propeller RPM is maintained at a constant speed, which is selected by the pilot, by a constant speed unit. 
This works by automatically changing the propeller pitch angle for a given power setting. It also provides a reverse thrust setting, when selected by the pilot. Fortunately, we will not go into detail at this point. The final section of this video deals with the turboshaft engines. Turboshaft engines are mainly found on helicopters. The main section of the turboshaft engine, the core, will contain the same components as the other types of engine, such as the compressors, combustion chambers, and turbines. Similar to the turboprop, the turboshaft will have a separate turbine, called the free, or power turbine, which is connected to a separate drive shaft, called the power shaft. Unlike the turboprop, the power shaft will exit through the rear of the engine, so that it can connect to the gearbox assembly. This is explained later. The exhaust is therefore channeled out through the side. On dual engine helicopters, there is usually only one exhaust port. Because the power shaft is connected to a main rotor gearbox, the free turbine and power shaft are designed that in the event of an engine failure, they do not create any significant drag on the gearbox system. This diagram shows a basic design of a helicopter main gearbox. The power shaft from the engine will connect to the gearbox as shown. The gearbox gearing assembly will then reduce the RPM from the engine, and will then drive the rotor shaft, which turns the rotor blades. So in this video, we have discovered that there are four types of jet propulsion. These are turbojet, turbofan, turboprop, and turboshaft. All are in use in today's aviation. Thank you for watching, and please stay tuned for the next exciting video from The Aviator.